Saratoga's proud past is filled with the names of champions and other champions who have found themselves interred in the graveyard of favorites. The origin of this nickname was born in 1919 with the running of the Sanford Stakes. Man of War, racing standard of greatness, was to suffer the only loss of his brilliant career in this race to the aptly named Upset. Eleven years later, Saratoga was to be the scene of another upset, every bit as shocking. Gallon Fox had won the Triple Crown, as well as the Dwyer Arlington Classic, was one to two in the Travers. At 100 to one, Jim Dandy, ridden by Red Baker, comes through on the rail, wins by eight. Jim Dandy would go on to run in 141 races during his career, never again approaching the brilliance of his Travers performance. For Gallon Fox, however, it was to be his only loss that year. Saratoga was the scene of yet another shocker in 1973. The scene was set early in the week when Reba Ridge, coming off a world record performance in winning the Massachusetts Cap, was stunned by 56 to 1 Witcher to Oil in an allowance turf test. Even with that upset fresh in their mind, the fans sent off Secretariat 1 to 10 in the Whitney. To a two and a half length lead with West Coast Scout second by ahead, ruled by reason alongside third. A gap of two lengths, Secretariat is fourth. Three lengths farther back, True Knight, as the field moves on to the back stretch. Onion has the lead by a length and three quarters. West Coast Scout is second on the inside by three parts of a length. Ruled by reason next, and there goes Secretariat, moving through along the inside now to be fourth. A gap of six lengths and True Knight down the back stretch. It's Onion showing the way by a length and a half. And on the outside, West Coast Scout second ahead. There's Secretariat, a closer third on the inside, moving to the leader. Two and a half lengths by their back, ruled by reason. Eight lengths, and it's True Knight fifth. They go past the half mile pole into the fire turn. Onion in front by a length. That's Secretariat on the inside, taking over second position, moving to the leader. West Coast Scout is now third, with ruled by reason fourth. Far back, it's True Knight. On the far turn, Onion in front by a head. Secretariat on the rail, now up to challenge for the lead. Coming to the top of the stretch, it's Onion on the outside. And Secretariat on the rail, up to challenge. They turn for home. There's three sixteenths of a mile to the finish. It's Onion on the outside. Secretariat on the rail, stride for stride, head and head, and down the stretch they come. Onion on the outside, Secretariat on the rail. An eighth of a mile to the finish. The leaders head and head, stride for stride. Secretariat and Onion. Onion has the lead by a head. Secretariat on the inside, past the sixteenth ball. It's Onion in front by a head. On the inside, Secretariat. Was it Alan Jerkins, the giant killer who trained Onion? Was it Secretariat's almost breaking through the gate before the race started? Or was it Saratoga? Saratoga was in top form the following year. Within the space of one week, even Money Nightly Sport, 9 to 10 Hatchet Man, 9 to 10 Halo, all went down to defeat. Undeterred, however, the Saratoga crowd made Chris Everett, the winner of the Philly Triple Crown and the 50-length conqueror of Miss Musket in a match race, 1-2 to two in the Alabama. As it stands for the first time, it's Quay's Quilt in front by a length and a quarter with Chris Everett in second position. Along the inside, that's C Sister racing third. On the outside, stage door Betty is fourth at this point. Along the rail, special team is fifth. Maud Muller on the outside, sixth by half a length. Lie Low is now seventh on the rail, and Fiesta Libre is eighth. They move to the back stretch. Quay's Quilt in front by one length, with Chris Everett on the outside, second by three parts of a length, and C Sister is now third by a length and a quarter. Stage Door Betty, fourth by four lengths. Lie Low is next, then Special Team along the rail, Fiesta Libre, and Maud Muller between horses eighth. Continuing down the back stretch, it's Quay's Quilt on the inside in front by a head as Chris Everett moves on the outside to challenge C Sister a closer third. That stage door Betty in fourth position by three, followed by Lie Low around the fire turn they go. Quay's Quilt holds on to the lead now by a length. Chris Everett second on the outside by one. C Sister is third by a head. Stage door Betty fourth. As they move now to the top of the stretch, Quay's Quilt maintains the lead by half a length. Chris Everett on the outside is second by three. Stage door Betty takes over the show spot. Along the inside, Fiesta Libre moves up. 
straightening away in the stretch. It's Quay's Quilt in front by a length and a quarter. Chris Everett second. Out in the middle of the racetrack, Special T moves up. Between horses, Fiesta Libre, Maud Muller on the rail. Coming to the 16th pole, Quay's Quilt in front by one. Chris Everett is second. 70 yards from the finish, it's Quay's Quilt and Chris Everett on the outside. Quay's Quilt, the half-sister to Susan's girl, leads from wire to wire as Heliodoro Gustinis follows instructions to the letter and steals the race. Another Alabama, five years later. Another Philly Triple Crown champion, Devona Dale. Another odds-on favorite, one to five on the board. Another Saratoga surprise. And they're off. On the outside, it's in the air, and Marzi dotes along the rail, then Devona Dale, and Poppycock with Crow Key past the sands now for the first time. It's in the air, has the lead by two, Devona Dale on the outside in second, cutting into that lead. Marzi dotes on the rail is third, then Crow Key in fourth, followed by Poppycock in fifth. They enter the clubhouse turn now. And the first quarter is running 24 and 1. It's in the air, leads the way by a length. Devona Dale on the outside is second. Then Marizy Dotes on the rail in third. Crow Key is fourth, and Poppycock remains fifth. Continuing around the clubhouse turn. It's in the air, leads the way. Now by only a half length as Devona Dale gains on the outside in second by two. It's Crow Key on the outside third. Marizy Dotes back into fourth, and Poppycock remains fifth. The half and 49 even, an easy pace. It's in the air on the rail, has the lead, maintains that lead by a neck. Devona Dale on the outside in second by two and a half. Crow Key on the outside again in third by a head. Marzi Dotes on the rail in fourth by two, and Poppycock remains fifth. They're at the half mile pole and three quarters run in one, 12 and four. It's in the air, continues to lead the way by an neck. Devona Dale, right there in second by two. Marzi Dotes moves up again into third. It's Crow Key on the outside in fourth, then Poppycock around the far turn. It's in the air now, draws clear again by a full length. Devona Dale on the outside is second by two. Then Marzi Dotes, Crow Key and Poppycock at the top of the stretch. They're in the stretch now, and it's in the air. Draws clear by two and a half. Devona Dale is second by a length and a half. Then Marzi Dotes on the rail, and Crow Key is followed by Poppycock past the eighth pole. It's in the air. Apparently, he's going to take this race. It's in the air. Has a lead by two and a half, and Devona Dale is second. It's in the air in front. It's in the air. Using the same front-running tactics of Onion and Quay's Quill, ends the Bonadale streak of eight straight stakes wins. Saratoga has claimed another victim. 1982, Conquistador Cielo was being hailed as a wonder horse after the unprecedented feat of winning the Metropolitan Mile, the Belmont Stakes, in the same week. Syndicated for a record $36 million. The Travers Field also included Gatto del Sol, Kentucky Derby winner, Aloma's rule of victor in the Preakness. But Conquistador Cielo was an overwhelming favorite at 2-5. to five. Conquistador Cielo along the inside is right alongside. They will enter the clubhouse turn together. And right behind them, surprisingly, is Gato del Sol. But it's Le Jolie in th fourth, and Runaway Groom is fifth. The first quarter was run in a very fast 23 and 2 fifth seconds. It's Aloma's ruler on the outside, has the lead by about a half. Eddie Maple on Conquistador Cielo. Has a good hold. He's on the rail in second. He's letting Aloma's ruler show the way. And Conquistador Cielo has about four lengths on uh, Gato del Sol. But it's La Jolie and Runaway Groom. The long shot remains in fifth. The half. Still a very, very fast pace. It's 46 and 2. Aloma's ruler on the outside continues to lead. And Conquistador Cielo is only inches behind as they approach the far turn. About four back is now La Jolie gaining on the rail, moving into third. And Gato del Sol is back into fourth. Aloma's ruler on the outside. Conquistador Cielo on the rail. They are heads apart. Three quarters, 10 and 3. Conquistador Cielo, Aloma's ruler. They remain together. They have three on La Jolie, but La Jolie is making up lots of ground. They're at the top of the stretch. The mile and 35 and four. Aloma's
Rose Roller stays in front. And on the inside, Conquistador Cielo. And now Conquistador Cielo puts ahead in front. Alamos Ruler on the outside is second. And Runaway Groom from Canada moves up. Runaway Groom alongside the inner two. Those three to the wire. Runaway Groom. Alamos Ruler, Conquistador Cielo. Runaway Groom in front. Shades of Jim Dandy. Runaway groom, although only 12 to 1, stuns the sporting world with his upset victory in the Travers, but never duplicates the brilliance of that day. Later, it came out that Conquistador Cielo, wearing front bandages for the first time that day, had had his ankle tapped days prior to the race, so he may have had an excuse. It matters not. Conquistador Cielo will go down as just another victim of Saratoga, graveyard of favorites.